Hi, this is Lydia with TeachYourKidsGuitar.com. Today, I'm going to show you how to train your singing voice with the Teach Your Kids Guitar method. We not only offer the easiest method for learning guitar, but also the easiest way for learning to sing. Even if you have never picked up a guitar or sung a note in your life, you'll be able to learn and even teach this approach. Our method is also ideal for those who do play guitar already and have always wanted to learn to sing, or for those who already sing and have always wanted to play guitar. Did you know that the guitar is actually one of the best tools you can use for developing your singing voice? This is because the guitar makes it easy to practice with a technique called pitch matching, where you sing along with the notes at the same time you're playing them. With pitch matching, the guitar notes you play function as a reference pitch for your voice. Here's a quick example. Pitch matching is the best way to learn to sing, and most kids can do it with a little practice. However, before you begin to train your voice, you should become comfortable with pitch matching itself. If you're new to this concept, I recommend watching our video, Learn to Sing and Play, before you continue on with the rest of this lesson on voice training. There are two ways you can use pitch matching with the Teach Your Kids Guitar Method. The first way is to practice singing the melody of the song at the same time you play it on guitar. Remember, with a guitar in your hands, you'll have a reference pitch for every note that you sing. You'll try to sing the same notes that you're playing, practicing matching your voice to them. Let's use a song from our method, Oh My Darling Clementine, as an example of pitch matching with the melody. Using this song's melody sheet, I'll sing the notes while I play them on guitar. In a cavern, in a canyon, excavating for a mine, dwelt a mine of forty nine with his daughter Clementine. This approach is effective for learning songs. But singing is a skill that can also be sharpened with vocal exercises. The Teach Your Kids Guitar Method provides a series of exercises for each song you learn, which produces results in a short amount of time. These exercises also serve as a good warm-up for your voice before practicing or performing. This brings us to the second way you can use pitch matching, which is for voice training exercises. Don't forget that pitch matching is only a means to an end. The end goal here is to train your voice to sing notes without needing a reference pitch at all. Now that you're ready to train your voice, let's look at the scale sheet for the song, Oh My Darling Clementine. The scale sheet is one of the learning tools that you'll receive in each song pack available at teachyourkidsguitar.com. This sheet presents the musical scale that a song is based upon and is valuable for both guitar and voice training. Of course, you'll need to understand guitar tablature to use the scale sheets. If you don't know how this popular notation system works, watch our video, How to Read Guitar Tablature. So, what is a scale anyway? The simple answer is that it's a group of notes that make up a song and that these notes often belong together in the same musical key. In other words, if a song is in the key of C, it will usually use notes from the C major scale for its melody and its chords. Since all songs are made up of notes from scales, it should be no surprise why using them to practice singing is so important. The Teach Your Kids Guitar Method provides a unique approach for practicing scales that makes them easy to grasp, even for kids. Each song's scale sheet presents you with only the fragment of the scale used in the song you're learning. In other words, a student will practice the real scale, but it will be limited to just the range of notes used in that particular song. 
This can be very helpful when practicing singing, since it allows the singer to focus entirely on the notes that really matter. The scale fragment is also effective because it immediately shows you both the lowest and highest note of the song you are learning. This is very important information for a singer to have, since we all have our own unique vocal range. Before you even try to sing a song, you should know if there are notes that are too high or too low for your singing voice. If this is the case, then don't worry. That's what a guitar capo is for. With a capo, you can easily adjust the pitch of a song or scale until you find the best range for your singing voice. For example, let's say I'm learning a song that has a low C note, which happens to be too low for my own singing voice. I could put a capo on a higher fret, which would put this note just inside my range. Uh. Thanks to the capo, I'll be able to play the song exactly as written, but now in a higher pitch. For an in-depth lesson on this topic, be sure to watch our How to Use a Capo video. Now, let's again check out the scale fragment for Oh My Darling Clementine. Looking at the scale sheet, we can see that the scale fragment starts on a lower G note and ends on a higher G note. This tells us that the lowest note used in this song is this lower G. And the highest note of this song is this higher G. However, this does not necessarily mean this song is in the key of G. In fact, this song is actually in the key of C. This is easy to see on the scale sheet because the C note has been circled in red and labeled as the root note, which is the most important note in a scale and the note upon which the scale is based. You can think of a root note as a home base for a scale. In fact, the root note is the final note used in just about every song you hear. Notice that the notes in the scale have been labeled as sol, la, ti, do, etc. This is called solfege, a popular singing technique. Using solfege means you'll sing the notes of a major scale as do, re, mi, fa, sol, la, ti with DO representing the root note of the scale. This technique allows singers to associate consistent sounds with notes in a scale. For example, if you sing DO and then MI, the distance between those two notes will always feel the same to you, no matter what key you're in. DO Before we move on, let's use pitch matching and sing the scale fragment using solfege. Sol, la, ti, do, re, mi, fa, so. Let's see how the voice training exercise applies to the scale sheet's practice patterns. Practice patterns provide effective ways to practice the scale, and there are three distinct categories. Contour, intervals, and arpeggios. Let's start by looking at contour with practice patterns 1A and 1B. Contour refers to the physical shape of a melodic line. As you can see, practice pattern 1A starts on the lowest note of the scale, travels up to the top, and then comes back down to end on the root. It has a smooth, flowing motion and ends on a root note just as a real musical idea would. Practice pattern 1B is similar, but it moves in the opposite direction. 
Now let's apply the voice training exercise to practice pattern 1A. I'll simply use pitch matching and sing the notes in solfege. Notice how I hold the notes out with my voice as I sing them. Sol, la, ti, do, re, mi, fa, so, fa, mi, re, do. This is something you can do every practice session to improve your voice and keep it in shape. Just think of it like a workout routine, but for your voice. And speaking of vocal workout, let's talk about another great way to sing this exercise. This will involve using any one of the five primary vowel sounds used in singing. These are a as in saw, e as in wet, e as in b, o as in row, u as in few. This approach works well because when you're practicing the scale, you're also singing the most common sounds found in music. These vowel sounds really work your vocal cords, so they can also act as a good warm-up before practicing or performing with your voice. Let's try the ah sound for now with practice pattern 1B. We'll hear a few more of these vowel sounds in just a minute. But first, let's see how the voice training exercise applies to some of the other practice patterns. The next category of practice patterns is intervals. An interval refers to the distance in pitch between any two notes. For this practice pattern, I'll be jumping back and forth between the root note of the scale, Do, and the other notes of the scale, while creating wider and wider intervals. This is an effective way to train your voice to feel different size intervals between notes. I'll try practice pattern 2A, this time using the eh vowel sound. Next, I'll try practice pattern 2B. Let's hear what it sounds like with the E vowel sound. The next category of practice patterns are arpeggios. Arpeggios consist of the notes used in chords, but played one note at a time. In this case, we are playing the arpeggio notes of a C major scale, which are also the notes found in a C major chord. Let's hear this with practice pattern 3A. This time, I'll try it with the O vowel sound. Oh, 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 oh. Now, I'll try practice pattern 3B with the final sound, ooh. Oh, oh, oh. Before we conclude this video, I want to remind you again about the concept of using a guitar capo. This is very important for singers, especially if a song contains notes that are out of your singing range. Let's try practice pattern 3B once again, but this time with a capo on the third fret. Notice that I can play the notes exactly as written, but now I'll be able to sing them with a higher pitch. Remember that you can use a capo for any of the practice patterns and also for the melody or chords in any song. Also, certain songs that contain lower pitch notes may make it absolutely necessary to use a capo. 
especially for kids. Make sure to watch our video on how to use a capo to learn more. That'll do it for this lesson video on voice training with the Teach Your Kids Guitar Method. We've seen how we can use the scale sheet for a variety of effective exercises to train your singing voice. Keep in mind, almost everybody has the ability to sing, but like anything else in life, it just takes some practice. I feel confident that you, your child, or both of you together will sing better if you stick with these exercises. We've covered a lot of important concepts in this video, so as always, make sure to revisit as often as necessary. Also, be sure to visit TeachYourKidsGuitar.com for more lessons and info about our unique learning system. Thanks for watching!